Welcome back to IPL Radio. This is the Jess Address and I'm making a new friend today, Sharon Gleeson. Um, you have a business that I am extremely interested in. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi Jess. So yeah, really great to meet you and appreciate the opportunity to come on today. So I'm actually a health coach. So I my background's actually in human resources and change management. So I did the whole corporate thing for 25 years. Yes. Uh, I've got two girls, so nearly 20 and 17. So um, yeah, seven years ago, I guess I was in that space where, you know, I was trying to keep all the balls in the air, juggling the career, trying to be a present mum, you know, there to drop off my kids and be at all the events. Um, you know, I did prioritise parts of my health, but I sort of realised that there were aspects of my health that I wasn't prioritising and I guess I got to a point where I, you know, nearly burnt out. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's common for a lot of us. I can just speak about women in general, trying to keep those balls in the air. I've got three children. I'm juggling quite a few jobs at the moment as well as being here, you know, as well as getting to school and being to all the events, like you said. Um, what's important, um, I guess, is the question that I ask myself and it has to be me. If I don't, if I'm not well, then everything else falls to the wayside is that something the message you kind of promote to I guess women yes you are so onto it because I think you know as a woman but also too this does apply to men yeah for well. sure um you know we often will put everything else first it'll be the kids it'll be the partner or the husband it'll be the job it'll be cleaning the house it'll be the dog housework and you know, filling up our own cup yes, um, is so important because if we don't look after ourselves, I know it can sound like a real throwaway line, but if you don't fill your own cup, you don't have enough to give to everyone else. That's true. And that's what I think I'm, I've really seen is that a lot of women especially are trying to do everything and they're not prioritising their own health. And, and for me, health is not just about exercise and nutrition. Mm. I guess, you know, that's where I kind of expanded my thinking because those things were always really important to me so I guess I never ever let the exercise ball drop or the nutrition ball drop but what I was dropping was the sleep the self-care and the stress yes Um, and so for me when I talk to people about health I like to look at all aspects of those five but I also focus a lot on mindset yeah so just thinking about that you think about okay I've got to get healthy you think about restrictions oh well I can't eat that I can't do that that's not what you're all about, is it? No. In fact, when I um, work with people, I actually just use like a little, you know, a health wheel, I guess, which has got those five areas. So nutrition, exercise, sleep, self-care and managing stress. And sometimes we need to start with sleep. In fact, a client I'm working with at the moment, when we looked at everything, everything felt like she wasn't exercising, she wasn't eating well, she was under enormous stress. She wasn't When sleeping. you're tired, you don't want to do those things, exactly. do you? And we actually, like I, when I start with someone, I just pick one thing. Yes. Because what happens is people go, I need to eat healthy, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm, and they try and do all Gung-ho. these things. And then yeah. within three days, they've dropped it all because it's too much. Mm. But in one week, you know, she actually prioritised getting to bed before 10.30. That one healthy time. habit. It was that one thing. And of course, because she was going to bed earlier, she had more energy to exercise. So she started to walk and she was walking with her husband, which was great because it meant that they were spending time, time together. Time together, yeah. And then you know what it's like when you start to do some of those things, it has a trickle effect. So then she felt like she wanted to eat healthier food. And so sometimes it's just figuring out what's that one thing that we need to change. And, and then when stacking we habits on top of those yes. healthy habits. Have yep. you read that book? I have. I've, <laughs> I have read that book and it was quite interesting to hear that you just start with the one mm. thing and then you build your habits up on top of that one thing, which I found is, is a very good approach. It's my favourite book, Atomic Habits. Yeah. 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 Oh, we've both so read the same book. Read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I heard you say habits. Yeah. Me? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what kind of things do you offer to your clients? Um, so I do do an initial um check-in just to see sort of where they're at and figure out is it you know do we need to do start with something really simple like even just something like a healthy habits challenge to get people used to just holding themselves accountable to just oh I like the sound of that tell me about the healthy habits challenge yeah so um, I mean I do a free version but I also do a version which incorporates you know some other coaching and so on yep Um, but it's really just picking one thing from each of those six areas so it might be eat five vegetables and two fruit Every day. Yeah. Like, that's a very easy way to start. But you'll be surprised. I'll give you a guess. How many, what percentage of Australians would you think eat their five and two every day? Um, 50%. 
Only 5%. 5%? So 95% of people don't eat their 5 and 2. And most people think that they do that. I heard that it's not actually 5 and 2. 5 and 2 is the standard, yeah. but we should actually be eating a lot exactly. more than that for yeah. health. Yeah. And, I mean, people think, well, why do I need to eat it? Partly it's the nutrients, but it's also, you know, that fibre is really good for keeping our gut healthy, which is really important. So sometimes it might be just starting with that. It might even be saying, like, I don't like to tell everyone what they have to do, but I say, let's pick one thing from this area. It might be someone who skips breakfast. Say, great, let's start with eating breakfast. Let's see if you can do that for 10 days and let's see what difference that makes to your energy levels. It might be self-care. Like, let's pick one thing. It might be just having a five-minute conversation with someone you love uninterrupted yes. you know, or just getting out in nature for five minutes. and Simplicity in some of the things that actually bring you so much joy yeah. and recognising that that does bring you joy. Mm. The flow-on effect from that is amazing, isn't it? Absolutely. So you've seen lots of success with a lot of your clientele and that obviously is what drives you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah when you hear people making changes, um, like I've, I, at the top end of my um, coaching, I do like a 90-day transformation program. Yep. So I've been working with a client who uh, – and she's awesome. Like she um, is 40. She's actually um, battles quite a debilitating disease but and she's got that under control. But she said, I want to focus on the next 40 years of my life, setting myself up, understanding more about the foods I'm putting in my body. Um, you know, she didn't even cook previously. So, you know, it was about setting up her kitchen, helping her to meal plan and prep. And, you know, 90 days down the track, she's eating really healthy. She's actually enjoying cooking. She's doing it with her husband. Um, you know, she's learned what foods fuel her body. She's learned that she can actually still eat really delicious food yeah. and not feel like she's missing out. So when you see people making those sort of changes and actually going, wow, I can actually do this. It's not that hard. It can be enjoyable. And they actually build them as habits that are sustainable because I think that's part of what drew me to this is I see a lot of people doing you know, quick fixings or challenges and not actually um, sustaining them. And I think what we need to do is well, we can actually build healthy living into our lifestyle just with these simple habits that we were talking about. Yeah. You don't have to have all that headspace taken up with worrying about absolutely the fact that you're not doing all the things that you know Absolutely. You do. Yeah. Um look, I love what you're doing and the fact that you're you're driving a business that helps and supports others that makes you feel happy. I mean, I can just see the circle <laughs> going. That's amazing. Um, what kind of programs do you offer people? Are they just one on one or are you part of a group? No, I um I do one on one, but I also do some group programs as well. So I'm running some I run them for organizations. So we'll do like lunch and learn type oh, sessions, excellent. which is really good. Yep. And I, just before I came here actually I'm just working on two programs that I'm launching that uh, just a way for people to just come in and just get a bit more of a feel for what I do. Yes. So one is, um, it's I call it your health is in your hands and it's really about creating your own little health blueprint. So just kind of stopping and going, where am I at now with my health and am I really happy with the trajectory yeah. that I'm on? Yep. Because it's a little bit like a ship in the ocean. Like if you don't know where you're going, you're just sort of floating around and sometimes we don't do something about our health or prioritise it until something, like I see a lot of people like that they get told by the doctor, oh, you know, now you're diabetic and it's too late then to... Yes. Whereas if you can actually get on the front foot and think, like I know for me, I really want to be able to enjoy my retirement. I want to be fit and healthy. Yeah. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to hike and do all these really cool things when I'm, you know, older. Yeah. But a lot of people don't think about that. I think we're so caught up in the day-to-day that we never get that Oh, the struggles of yesterday, the worries about tomorrow and things yeah. like that, that they don't actually think about themselves and their future. And that's an important part of planning, as you said, thinking about a happy, healthy future and what do I need to create that happy, healthy future, which is why you're here to help them. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, pr- that program is about figuring out where am I at now, where would I really love to be and then actually sort of thinking about this as a journey. Like let, let, let's pick one thing to start with and then sometimes what happens is as you address that thing, other things actually start to fall into place. So it's yes. really helping them have a bit of a roadmap and the other workshop is um, you know, really helping people to find ways to have more energy because the biggest thing that when I talk to people is I say if there's one thing you could improve about your health, what would it be? I have my hand up ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I wish I had more, I energy. more energy. energy. Yes. So, um, helping people learn how to eat to nourish their body. Yep. Because uh, I see a lot of not so healthy habits around that with meal skipping or, um, you know, not eating breakfast. Quick snack. Too much coffee. Too comes much in a, yeah. yeah. And, I'm, and I'm not saying don't eat 
delicious food, but let's eat delicious, healthy food. Yes. That's quick to make because that's the other thing is we're busy and that's why people are alive. Yeah, it has to be convenient. Can I get your opinion on some of the food um, delivery services that we have, you know, Marley Spoon, things like that? Are they effective in helping people plan healthy food or do you believe you're better off going and doing your shopping yourselves and planning your meals that way? Look, I do think that they, they do help busy people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, to be honest, I actually tr- have tried a couple of them just to okay. see what I think. Um, the thing that I found was that I, I don't mind th- that the meats and the vegetables and all that kind of stuff, that the meals are great, but sometimes it's the sauces and okay. some of those things that are what actually um, lets you down. So, like, I like to teach people how to fill their plate to make sure you've got a really balanced meal with the right yeah. amount of, you know, vegetables and protein and carbs and healthy fats. Yes. And as long as they're picking meal options that actually – uh, what we call a hormonally balanced meal. So you've got enough for energy, you've got enough protein for all your important bodily functions and so on. You just brought up a very important point, I think, and I'm in my 40s, um, 42 to be <laughs> exact, but hormonal imbalance <laughs> or balance. Um, tell me a little bit about that because I think it definitely interests me on how I can balance out my hormones. Yeah, so we actually... Um, together with a homeopathic doctor, we've actually run some um, workshops for women on how to balance hormones yes. because it is a really big issue um, and you'll never believe the two biggest things that you can do to actually um, affect your hormones. Mm, tell me. Number I'm one is managing stress. Okay, yes. Yeah. And the second one is um, looking at what you're eating. Okay. So Because things like, um, you know, when your blood sugars are out of balance, that then creates a whole bunch of other issues. A little storm within yeah. yourself. Yeah, so um, we actually have got a... Um, recorded video. Okay. I send you with some really good tips because I think the other thing too is a lot of women we don't really fully understand. No, that's true. That's um, true. And you, I mean, it's not until I've started to do research on it, I've realised how much they have an effect on a wide range of me as a person. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, heading towards menopause, and I know that's a dirty word and I'm not there yet, but there's something like 500 different symptoms that are related to menopause. Now, all of those 500 don't seem like nice things to be going through, but there are ways, as you would know, to manage those symptoms and manage the prelude into um, menopause. Don't even like saying the word, um, but <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it's something that us as women need to talk about because a lot of people are going through these transitions and feeling these type of ways and not knowing that what you eat, you sleep, all those self-care types of things, self care are very important to being yeah. able to manage y- your brain and your body and everything in between. You know, I, I'm sure that you. I am very interested in that video. It's interesting. Um, We actually looked at running some workshops around this um, particular topic. We tried Sunday afternoons, we tried Saturday mornings, we tried a weekday morning and it's really typical of women is that they wouldn't actually invest the time for themselves to come and learn more about it because the kids are playing sport. I've been working all week. I need to focus on getting the house clean and the groceries done. Um, I'm so tired. I need to rest. So, you know, women, it's it's again that cycle of needing to go, do you know what? If I miss a kid's footy match, it doesn't matter. There's probably going to be 16 other footy matches. This I'll be year. able to make or the next 16 <laughs> because I'm putting myself first exactly. and I'm not going to be stressed out. I'm not going to be unwell. That's right. Because I'm going to go and listen and you're going to educate me on what will make me feel better. And yeah. Exactly. And I think that's the thing is, you know, we, we have to sometimes be okay with putting ourselves first because, again, if you're not, then that has a ripple effect onto your family and so on. And look... I've seen some really sad cases where people have let things go too long. Yes. And it affects them, you know, with their own mental health, that it can affect them financially, it can affect your marriage, it can affect your work, affects your kids and relationships. Um, and you don't want to get to that point. And, and no one ever sets out to actually end No, up like that's that. exactly right. But unfortunately, and I guess that's the thing that I've started to see more, is that all of a sudden something tragic happens for someone. Yes. Um, that they just didn't see coming and yeah. then it's a really big, you know, it's It's a harder climb, isn't it, to Absolutely. get back, yeah. And if you can just make it important, make it more of a priority now. With And I get it, like I've been there, I've done the whole working the corporate career, running the kids around, like, honestly like a crazy woman, 
I understand and I think that's why I'm so passionate is because people say to me like how do you stay in shape like how do you manage to do all the things that you do yeah but it's because I've made choices and I've learned how to create quick and easy meals I've learned how to prioritize exercise and make sure I get it in self-care I'm still kind of working yeah on. and but, it, but it's we, always we a, work a work in progress. progress yeah even sleep like n- I now have learned that gosh you know all those times that I'd stay up till midnight working mm. I didn't need to because it hasn't actually really made that much difference no. if anything you're probably more effective because you're not as tired yeah but getting people to make that commitment and that change that's the really big challenge so I'm an interested person, interested in what you do. How do we get in touch with you? I know I was just checking out your website and it's got lots of valuable information, but you were talking about that initial consult. How do we get in touch with you? Yeah, so if you want to jump onto my website, it's just SharonGleason.com. Um, there's a little contact me button. Um, just I do a free 15-minute um, catch-up on the phone and just sort of see where you're at because it's not about me just saying oh listen here's all these programs it's figuring out where someone's at where they'd love to be with their health and figuring out what's the best place to start yes you know, sometimes it might be come on let's just start with the healthy habits if it's a big program but some people if they want results quickly it might be a 30-day reset if they've got some health issues at the moment or it might be you know with the 90-day program that's where one thing that I've learned is, you know, a lot of issues that people have specifically around food are to do with conditioning. Yes. You know, I know I was brought up to eat everything on my plate and even yeah. though I'm acutely aware of it, it's still something I have to focus on all the time. But a lot of the times I see, you know, people emotionally eat, they stress eat. Putting out <laughs> my hand, I'm an emotional eater. And yeah. so we need to actually where we get the real breakthroughs is where we can actually start to unpack some of that stuff and figure out what's really going on. Yeah. So yeah, so that, I think that's the thing is, you know, sometimes people might have just got a bit off track. They might have need a bit of help getting back on track. But where there's a history of, you know, a lot of food struggles and so on, that's where we need to kind of do some of that deeper work. And I think that's really important is having that person because you do go off track. Everyone makes mistakes. Is having you in their corner to go, yeah, you've got off track. That's okay. Let's reset. Let's get back on track. And you being the person to go, come on. It's time to get back on track because often you need that little shove in the right direction going, we all make mistakes, that's fine, but now it's time to reset the mind and work out where you're going, you know, that compass point and start setting yourself towards that goal. Um, I'm so glad that you came in to talk to me. I am really interested in that video on hormones and things like that. And not only that, (laughs) I I actually think there's um, a couple more things that I want to talk to you (laughs) about. Um, Thanks so much for joining us. I hope to have you back. You you are listening to The Jess Address and we are going to be playing Love Yourself by Justin Bieber. What a song to play. That was perfect. (laughs)